Here's a clip from this week's episode of Cooking Issues with Dave Arnold. Uh, Brandon Burr writes in, what is your standard gravy protocol? I've experimented a lot over the years, but it keeps coming back to a basic root plus stock combination and adjust the consistency, consistency at the end with Wondra if necessary. Maybe amount with extra butter or turkey fat. It's basically gravy the way my grandma used to make it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But if there's room to improve on tradition, I'd love to hear about it. All right. Well, okay. Here's what I do. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't do. I don't do ruse anymore. Why not? I'm pain in my butt. I don't do it. Okay. I, I, I ran. Here's here's a test I ran. Ready for it? You know how everyone says, uh, "Oh, blah 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 blah" with rue. You know how they say that? It's like blah blah yakety schmackety. You know how they, people do that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here here I ran a test where I just. Boiled water and flour together. And I was looking for that telltale, it's going to taste like flour. Mm -hmm. And like, it is true that after 30 minutes, maybe it was slightly more neutral, but it wasn't this horrible effect that everyone says you're going to get. So if you read cookbooks, like I read cookbooks, then you're going to hear something like this. You, you either have to only cook uh, a roux with a sauce or with a bermani. You know, bermani is when you take butter and flour and knead them together into balls. You can only cook it for like either two minutes or it needs to cook 30 minutes. Anything in between and you're going you're gonna to ruin everything. How many times have you read that advice? Millions, right? Yeah. Millions. Decent amount of times. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. Just from my experiments cooking water okay. and flour. But what I do is uh, my standard protocol now is, first of all, have a lot of good stock. Don't try to make gravy just from drippings. Yeah, no. Have a lot of good stock. Yeah. Right? This is a good turkey reason to stock. Yeah. This is a good reason to bone your bird. Yeah. Yes. And please don't base your turkey gravy on chicken broth. I oh, mean, not the same. You can reinforce... I'm, I'm look, you can take a good... Let's say you have good chicken stock. You can reinforce that with bones with, from turkey. That's not going to hurt anything, but you need to have turkey in there. Anyway, my protocol, and this is going to sound crazy... Is and again, like you know, I probably shouldn't be saying this because I haven't run all the tests yet. But what I do at home is I literally add the flour to cold liquid. Like, so you know how you do cornstarch slurries? Yeah, you can do it with flour. You just need to have a lot more. So instead mm -hmm. of it being like a one to one, you need like two point five to one, or three mm -hmm. to one. So like. What I'll do is is I'll I'll uh, take my stock, which is a gelé, because of course my stock is is so strong. Because I do I do you know pressure cook stock, and I don't add too much water. A fourteen pound turkey. <coughs> if you have all the bones from a fourteen pound to fifteen pound turkey, you should only get about a liter of gravy out of that. Okay, if you're getting more than that, your your stock is is too weak. All right, I'm just gonna tell you that. Uh, so. I just melt out the stock, but keep it cold so it's not going to f no you know below forty mm -hmm. right, and then I just blend the flour into the stock, and then just heat it while I'm stirring, no lumps. It just because the flour is not going to lump when it's cold. Mm -hmm. That's how slurries work, and then as keep stirring as soon as it comes up to temperature, boop, it's thick, and then it's over. You know what I mean? Add your sherry. Whatever. Are you, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you like in your gravy? I like a little sherry in my gravy. I like a little sherry vinegar. Oh, a little acidity. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have a little acidity. I think it's also nice, like, at the, to put it in, a, you know, at the beginning, like, right after the I put the roux and everything, and then kind of, like, cook it down a little bit, and then put a little bit of fresh in at the end. It's, I don't know, like, kind yeah. layers the flavor. Yeah, like that's like, like the way you do in, like, a turtle soup or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never made turtle soup, but yeah, sure. But I, I developed this technique when I was making mushroom gravy because I want to saute the mushrooms and then I want to make like the mushroom stock and then I want to thicken it, but I don't want to blend it and I don't want to do a bourmani. So I was like, what if I just add the flour? It works great. Nice. Yeah. So try it. Let me know what you think. Um, um, I like the pressure cooking, the stock. I like making the fresh stock and having the fresh gravy. Yeah. I really think that's like the... the, the yeah, it really starts with the stock. Yeah. Stock, yeah. Gravy yeah. is all about a good stock. Yeah. Any I, gravy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm also team make-ahead roux. I have just roux in my freezer. 
Oh yeah. And then here's what I here's what I don't like because like all the instructions like here's what I don't like. I don't like having to make my roux and then have a separate pot with boiling stock to add to the roux to get it to thicken so that it doesn't clump because you added a bunch of cold stuff to the roux and then it turns into and then it. I, I, don't know, I, just, it's, I find it unpleasant. I find the whole. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna like solid block the roux, and then I tell people to add it with like a cheese grater. No, I'll say this: I also don't do brown roux. So if you really want that brown flavor from the roux, I mean, I don't need that because my stock is already brown yeah. McBrown. So like, I don't need. Yeah. I, the flavors are already like so there. I really just want it to get thick. You know what I mean? Uh, Subscribe to the Cooking Issues Patreon to listen live every week, get early access to the podcast, and for all access members, watch a live video stream from the studio. For more information, visit patreon.com backslash cooking issues.